This is Cowboy Luna. He was playing with his little roommate dog, and he's only six months old. Probably more like eight months. And he and him and his friend were playing in the house, and then he he uh, yelped and he started lifting his leg, not to pee, but because it was painful. And it's this leg right here. And any time a dog limps, you you look at their pads and their nails to make sure that nails aren't a problem. Broken nail is real common for pain. You can squeeze each one of the little toes. You can even say this little piggy went to market, but you don't have to. And you see if there's any reaction to pain or any swelling or any wounds. Is there anything in between the toes? Is there anything between the pads, any wounds or foreign objects? Then you squeeze the whole foot. You can see he doesn't really care about that. You squeeze this part of the leg. You kind of flex the hot part. Um, he's paid attention, but doesn't appear real painful. And you can work it back and forth and squeeze the what's called the tibia, the slate bone. And then you can work the stifle in and out like that. Now, if I extend the stifle or the knee joint, he's, you can see he, it, it hurts him a little bit. Huh. He's quivering and he's looking back, which is kind of some attention to it. Now he's going to lay down right there and say, will you stop that? You can also rotate, rotate the hip around and feel, put your thumb right on the hip bone, right on the, actually the, the femur and where the socket is, and you can do that. And there doesn't seem to be any pain in the hip joint, the knee joint, the hock joint, or the, the feet. And I said knee joint, and I meant, yes, there is pain in the knee joint. Because when I do that, he kind of flinches. So then you can test the muscles. You can start up at the hip joint and go all the way down in the muscles and see if there's any pain. And in the back muscles to see if there's any pain. Well, it turns out he, as a young puppy, has damaged one of the areas in his knee where there, the bone's growing, and we'll show you that on the x-ray. Just to orient you before we look at the x-ray, see the big space right in the middle of that picture? That's the actual joint. On either side, it looks like there's little caps on the bone. Well, between the caps and the, the actual bone, below is the tibia, above is the humerus, those are called growth plates, and those lengthen those allow the bone to lengthen as the puppy grows. Those, those between the cap and the bone lengthens and it grows. But in this puppy, what happened was if you see the normal bone in the upper left, that's the joint, that's the growth plate we just talked about. And then if we move over to the type one, a fracture can occur. That's that wavy line between the cap and the bone itself or the epiphysis in the bone itself, and that's called a Salter type 1 fracture. And that's what this puppy has. He had, He's injured his growth plate when he hit, when he got hit by... So this might seem a little bit hard to see, but as you look at the end of the bone there, you can see there's a kind of a space between the cap that we pointed out and the small piece of bone and that right there is where that small piece of bone has moved away that little tiny growth plate is the tibial crest piece of bone and it's been moved away from the actual place where it sits and there's the cap on the bone like we pointed out in the diagram and then the femur above that and you can even see the kneecap now let's compare that to the other uh, growth plate you can see the cap on the bone of the other stifle or knee you can't hardly see it and you can see that little tiny bone the space between that bone is more normal so that's what it looks like when it's normal so the other uh, the bone on the other leg has been displaced as you can see in this shot uh, and but however in this puppy the owners really didn't want to do surgery i don't really think surgery is needed because it hasn't moved that top cap away. So what we did is we put a thick bandage on the leg and we're going to replace it every two weeks and 
um, that way he won't be able to stress that that joint or that uh, piece of bone at all and sometimes puppies will just rip them off so I'm going to see how he's going to do with that before I torture him with any big cast which I think don't really think is necessary at this point now surgery could always be an option in a week or so when I check him. If the leg looks worse, we can always consider putting pins in it and wiring that uh, tibial crest growth plate into place. But right now, I think it's going to be fine. Um, give it about four to six weeks to heal. And with a bandage, we don't have to worry about uh, cast sores and about the puppy uh, it falling off the puppy they're just much too active for a cast in mo in many times many in many situations so just thought you'd enjoy that uh, that's called a growth plate injury in a puppy it's the tibial crest uh, tuberosity uh, that's been displaced and slight displacement of the epiphysis, epiphysis of the tibia sorry epiphysis of the tibia so anyway i hope you have a good day and check out dog dish diet if you get a chance better ways to feed your dog um, i have a new book coming out just going to get published here in a few months called the dog diet answer book anyway check the website and you can get your dog dish diet updated or learn more about how to feed your dogs and puppies